This is Boxing Tickets NA. We're here at the breakout, Dulster Hall. Well, it's not the breakout now. Everything's all done and dusted. But, Jamie, what night? Brilliant. It started slowly and momentum started to build throughout the night. Um, great crowd in from the first fight, which is a credit to the Belfast public. It went on a bit longer than I, uh, we had looked at, but uh, it's, it's, it's all right. We, had a, we tried a few different things in eight. Praise guy was, went down really well. The shooting of the cannons, wee things like that. So all trial and error tonight was, was really good, but overall really happy. Two, two main events, or the, the main, the co were, were phenomenal. And, you know, they're a credit to any show, all, all the boys who were in the fight. So, yeah. Okay. What was the reason, obviously, behind obviously a later start at seven? Obviously, I guess people were messaging me during the day and they're going, "What time the card starting the zone seven? Where can we see the other fights?" Or like every fight's on the zone. Was it all about giving everybody an opportunity to get their eyes seen around the world? Yeah, definitely. Because initially, Owen and Kimsky was due to be a six, but we had to bring it down to a four so TV you could fit everything in in the time slot. So it was it was um, a bit of a task in that regard and it did run over by about 20 30 minutes and that's something they'll have to you know, go back in during the week and have a look at but yeah just getting everyone an opportunity everyone here we've been banging the drum about the talent here in the conveyor belt that's just producing constantly the fighters here and it's just about getting them opportunities to showcase that talent and, and that's kind of what they all done tonight I guess when you plan these shows, you obviously think, oh, there's going to be a stoppage here, there's going to be a stoppage here. Is it probably fair to say it was obviously match well tonight because there wasn't any stoppages? I guess it's a nightmare probably if every fight wanted a stoppage. So were you glad in the way that it sort of ran over? It sort of shows that the fight's really good, good match throughout? Well, actually, I didn't see a stoppage on, on my sheet. I was going, we don't have a stoppage, don't have a stoppage. Didn't think. Well, I thought the two that come in the main, Michael, because of the intensity and ferocity, that you might get a stoppage, but the other ones, they're all good. Like, with Steve Little smashing the show for us, and, and Steve's very, very, very good. I rate him really highly, and we'll, we'll work together going forward. But he matched a very, very strong undercard, yeah. I guess the, probably the best place to obviously maybe think of the card is Farrell Kerr. Like, what a fight! Like, I know I obviously had a different scorecard, they obviously what I read out, but that was the sort of magnitude of the sort of fight that it was. There was tight rounds, you know. I think I give one round, I think maybe the sixth. Sixth or seventh, I think, is a 10 10. Um, but what a fight. And, like, there's no loser sort of there. I know there's a, there's a winner in Farrell with, with the belt, but Conor Kerr is no disgrace. Obviously, the fact it was a really, really good fight is probably one that people might want to see again, maybe very instant, sort of. Yeah, definitely. I, I think Conor can look at what Rudy has done in terms of just keep going down there, down there, down them stairs. Are you going to cross the hotel? Um, no, no, no misses are allowed. You can tell her just to go on home. She can go on home. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, like Connor can look at what Rudy has done in terms of he'll always get a shot with us, and, and I already said the Ian as soon as the fight was kind of over, no matter what, he'll get another go and another crack at the, the whip with, on our shows because the way you fight like that, you deserve it. Um, you're right in saying there is no loser, but you know, unfortunately, there always has to be a loser, and um, but he can build back. But there was plenty there already could see. The engine, the both boys, the, the will to win, the, the, the digging deep, the determination, you know, the punches that they put together, it was brilliant. It was one of the best fights I've seen live in a long way. Maybe, well, in, in, in Belfast especially, maybe back to Stevie Ward, Conroy. Uh, Conroy, you know, it was one of them. It was just, you go, I go, you go, I go, and fantastic. If, if you probably, they said anybody probably, well, I guess nobody deserves anything in life, but obviously from what Rudy Farrell's been through, mental health problems, Obviously not getting a fight for a couple of years. I think he did five different fights. Dates turned down. Obviously more recently, obviously lost his cousin and, and obviously his aunt. So, like, I guess you know the emotion that's come out there is, is really far. And what a, what a story! And I guess it's a story that probably more people need to get behind because you know a defeat doesn't change someone. And, and look what it's done to him now. Oh, definitely. Um, not just in the ring. I'd say the ring. He's been he's been going through hard times, but it's just made him harder. Uh, Harry performed and it was exceptional. It was a real test of him, his true mentality, his team around him, his family around him. Because when the going gets tough, and if you're not tough enough, you'll get going. And he was tough enough. He dug deep when he needed to dig deep. He really gritted it out. I thought that was a harder fight for him than the other two, Murph and, um, Murph and George Hughes. And, and, and he, dug his, he dug, really dug his heels in. I think there's something that can be really built around Rudy. Um, the general public, can, can warm to him, you know, they, they can see synergies in him, what, it, what, what he thinks and how, how he kind of went about his work. He plays the showman, he plays to the crowd during the, the weigh-ins, he plays to the crowd during the nights. There's definitely something we can build there between him and 
Would it be? I know potentially it looks like obviously he's going to fight for the WBO Youth belt in June. Would it be something that maybe Colin Box may be interested in maybe promotionally signing? Obviously, I know he's his own manager, Ian Gochran, but is that a story that you would obviously like to get behind? Because you like to obviously look at talent and, and bring talent through. Would, would Farrell maybe fit that mould of a sort of fighter you'd want? I'd say the will speak during the week. I'd say there's, there's something that can be done there over really definitely. There's something that can be, be built. You know, Gertwood isn't far from his house. Seven, no, why not build him in Gertwood? You know, why not try to build him in, in North Belfast and build North Belfast around Rudy? And, you know, that's, that's something that can be done, small, and build it back out. Because he's he's made for, for the bigger nights as well. He's made for these kind of fights. And he's got a good team around him where they can they can help him, steer him in the right direction. So I'll, I'll speak to Ian during the week to see what, what, uh, what is there for him and what can be done. Obviously on Kurt, you know, I've sort of praised you, obviously. You're, you're obviously very good at guiding fighters in a good way. And probably similar, I'd say, probably in the way Sean McComb was. You're sort of trying to find a level. You matched Kurt very, very tough very, very early on. And that probably paid dividends tonight, obviously, with James Beach. It, it just broke his heart. People, I think, they look at the performances, they look at the records of people who Kurt was fighting, and they, they overestimate them or underestimate them. And they, they kind of, they, they, they play them down, you know, it was his boring compounds, all the things, but they don't realise with the toughness, especially in the Nicaraguan guys we were bringing up, the Brazilian Rodrigo was, was really tough. Uh, myself and Mark done that there. And like, they're the kind of nights where after it, he's disappointed, but I know that's the ones that will stay. You know, when, going, when it really gets tough in there, when he gets under pressure, when, when the distance is getting close, all the kind of physicalities that he was up against, because he was fighting a lot at lightweight and super featherweight, he's a natural featherweight, and he's a legitimate featherweight. And, and the boys were always putting the pressure, were always a bit heavier, and they were always testing them, and they were always kind of gritting it out. And they had a target on the back because he's Olympian. I just, you know, that's, that was part of the journey. And when we sat down and said, the best nature to see Kurt Walker is when he's in real fight. When you're a high elite level amateur, world class amateur, an Olympian, you're used to fighting fighters who are the best in the world. When you drop down levels of fight and journeyman, it's very hard to get up for it, especially Kurt's mentality. It's very, very hard to keep him motivated for them kind of fights. Tonight was called the breakout because we felt that tonight was going to be the breakout of Kurt, and he proved everyone right. It was a, it was a fight that if he didn't have it, he'll be found out. And Jimmy Booch comes in and he gives no one an easy night. You know, you, if you can get past him, then you're ready to go on. And Nathaniel Collins is the hope he prices Dennis McCann. They've all gone on to do something else. But this is Kurt's night. Kurt really broke out. Kurt's in the mix. I'm delighted for him. I, I think something can be built here again with Kurt. It's going to take time. We're investing in people. Uh, we need to get the, the general public to kind of notify or you know, become one with them. Seeing what Barry and, and, and Cyclone done with Carl in the, in the Ulster Hall days and trying to build cards around them and then build it up. So definitely something that can be done there with Kurt. Where do you sort of go next? Obviously, Kurt said, obviously, he's happy for sort of, you know, he's called for the Hopi prices. And Nathaniel Collins, you know, there's probably even the Mass Masood, obviously, out of the Commonwealth as well. Like, where do you sort of go sort of next with him? Because like, I guess, you know, most of these fighters, obviously, with Queensbury, I guess in some ways the good news is that it looks like Queensbury may be coming back here in potentially May or June. Would that maybe set a time frame that maybe that could work as, as part of a card? You know, it could be main event, maybe even. Could that be maybe an option? It could. It's one of many. It's one of many. Um... I think he's in a position, though he also can dictate his own future. He doesn't have to bounce, you know, uh, dance to the beat of someone else's drum. Nathaniel Collins is a fantastic fighter. Um, Hobie Price is a fantastic fighter. You know, Masoud Abdullah is a fantastic fighter. They're all good fighters, and they're all around the same kind of level. But I believe Kurt Walker has got something beneath, behind him from that amateur days. The pedigree that's come with him, that you know, will have my head and shoulders above him. So. We'll sit down over the next week or two. Uh, I did say to Leighton, who looks after um, the Queensbury boys, that you know, we'll see how we get on here and we'll, we'll maybe have a talk next week. I've known Lee a long time, so if there's something that can be done, I can do it with Lee. There's always a plenty of talks sort of happening, obviously. I guess that's the magnitude that people don't see sometimes, all the talks you sort of have to build these cards. When he's sort of maybe looking at the next one, is there maybe the next one, maybe the potentially Kevin Cronin one, and maybe potentially May, June, and Kerry? I guess it's sort of a moving part sometimes, and there's so many promoters, you sort of nearly have to work together in some ways to make sure that everybody can get a piece of the pie rather than clashing the dates and everything else. Yeah, one million percent. Um, we'll, we've called with the zone next week after at least the holidays, and then we'll see, see what dates suit, and, and, and then we'll start moving towards 
potentially carry in the summer. We have a few dates lined up. We have Belfast here in July and August slash uh, lined up. We're discussing a few different shows. We've got a few different venues penciled. We're looking at one maybe in, in, in Liverpool. Um, you know, see one maybe in America as well? Uh, I think, yeah, Mick, Mick met with Ken Casey at the Dropkick Murphys. Um, uh, Ken used to do a bit in, in, uh, in the promotional side of things and still does. And we were looking at different venues over there and, and seeing if Ken can steer us in the right direction to kind of do something in Boston. So, uh, yeah, just trying to explore all different avenues at this one in time, trying to grow something. We're still in the baby stages and it's, it is baby steps. We've just got to make sure the, right, the next step is the right move. And, I'm excited about the potential of Kerry. I've listened to Kevin. You know, I've listened to the boys down there, and I think we're gonna head down there and have a look at different venues in the next few weeks. Is it is it is it enjoyable? Sort of is it these nights are sort of ones that's probably more enjoyable. Maybe some of the bigger nights because you know that you're building towards the next sort of thing. You know, you're building. You know, your next Michael calling them with obviously Kurt. You're building. You know, a potential new Kurt Frampton. Is these the ones that's probably more enjoyable cards for you? Which would which would you favour? Maybe the bigger cards because they're easier to manage or. Would you enjoy these ones? It's hard to say. They're all equally as a pain of the bollocks some, somewhere. Um, you'll get someone, just just something happening. But you know, some smaller ones, sometimes there are a lot more work um, and a lot more going on in them. We tried a few different things out tonight, you know, different rig outs, different things, lighting, different, different production company. And we just kind of then have to assess and look to see what's the right fit because we are hopefully going to keep the same, you know, generic brand going forward and keep things moving. and. Yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued with the ideas of Praise Guy as well and what we can do in the future with her. We were doing the Canon stuff, shooting at the T-shirts with Monterax and loads of wee things. We've done the F Fate Day 5K with Monterax, wanted to do that, the beer company getting involved, all wee things that we're trying to grow, you know, from being a small promotion, um, one or two man promotion to try and build into something that's bigger and, and, and really get a, a foothold here. and in Ireland and, 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 and elsewhere, you know, I've, I believe and always have been a big believer in the talent we have in this country. Um, it's just uh, getting the eyeballs on it. I think we, we're, we're close to cracking up. You had obviously a super middleweight in the building tonight. Um, obviously, Jason Quigley obviously doing comms with the zone. Was there maybe a reason behind that? Obviously, both obviously him and Potty both fought Belanga. I spoke to Jason obviously before it started, and he, he sort of knows that people's been calling him out. Um, obviously, domestic fights and everything else. It was that maybe one of the reasons to get Jason here tonight to sort of go here to want some work, but here to want to fight at the same time. No, it, no, it's the. The sultry tones of Bally Buffet man is, is, I thought was a good idea for, for the zone pen public. So no, that was it. I think Jason is a, is a very, very um, adequate, like Harry handles it professionally, how he speaks, how he comes across, his pronunciation of words, his eye for boxing. I think he's, he's got a good, good gig there potentially. Uh, and I, I would like to kind of work with him doing the comms going forward. And, and I also like Jason, I've known him a long time, so, so that it, it makes it a bit easier. The other sort of midweight you talk about is not a sort of midweight, this one time. He's a lot heavier. We went on the 5K today. He was second last. Was he not? He was running with me. We talked the whole way, so it wasn't, it wasn't no one's race. I'd seen a kid coming out 32 minutes, so just don't worry about that. But um, we we'll just sit down next week. If Ken got a wee bit of an understanding of, of where we're all at, um, we'll sit down next week there. There was another ship middle with GDB and he didn't make it up from Dublin, um, which is another intriguing fight that, that I like. But again, all comes down to pay. All, all, but he's the man who makes the decision. I, I work for him. I, I, whatever he tells me to do, I'll do. I guess for, with all three of them now, they've sort of got to that stage. And I said to Jason earlier on, it's right that you can sort of look for money in a way because when you've invested so much of your life into a sport, you want to be finishing off with as much money to secure a future outside of boxing as well. So the three of them's all in this sort of triangle. It's sort of what do the sort of fans want to see more? Do they want to see a, a, a McCrory killer, a McCrory Quigley, a Quigley killer? It's sort of, there's a good wee mix sort of there, but like that, that's, any one of them fights would, would be perfect in the field if it goes ahead. Yeah. Spick Sullivan as well in the mix, maybe. I don't know what way he's floating around at these days, but yeah, there's, there's potential there. There really is. Um, I'm always very quick to say, if you're feeling half out, just get out. It's a very tough game to be in. Um, and I think all boys have their 
their main set in the right direction in terms of their building for the future outside of boxing. Luke's got his own business, Paulie's a very accomplished PT and looking to, to grow further and Jason's got loads of different things and now starting to manage and working with Roberto Diaz. So, yeah, I, I like to see that. I really like to see that with fighters because we all get to this stage and, you know, this sport is brutal. It's a very unforgiving sport. It's a sport that no matter how much you love it, it'll never love you back. No matter how much the people cheer, when the cheering stops, no one's there to fucking help you. So if anyone is kind of thinking of, you know, they're one out, they, they should kind of go. Because this, this, this sport, this sport is not, uh, that's not nice at times. And when you're at that stage of your life and your career and you've got other career prospe prospects on the horizon, you need to kind of just take a step in. But it's very hard, especially when you're talented and you've achieved so much and achieved what the lads have achieved and achieved and, and want to achieve further and feel you can. You know, it's a, it's a tough one to weigh up, but um, I'm excited potentially with, with, with one of the fights that we're looking at. I'm really I'm excited. It's, but it's just about the boys then seeing if they, if they really want to do it or not. Final one for me, obviously, a, a few rumours are sort of starting to spread, and obviously Lewis, obviously, I know that you have him in talks for a fight. I guess you were potentially maybe looking at the Katie Taylor card, but it looks like Katie's obviously going to fight now in America. Probably maybe that would have been a good one, actually, in a way, because Katie and Lewis's sister, Alana, obviously had the first licensed female fight. That would have been a good story, that obviously, if Lewis had been on a card with Katie. He'd probably maybe be disappointed, maybe Katie maybe looks like it's America, but I guess she wants to tick off boxes and, and boxing herself rather than being a, a guinea pig getting sort of dragged everywhere. Yeah, listen, Lewis is in camp, it's no secret. He's been working hard at this one. The time with Billy Nelson, he came home for a weekend, I seen him last Friday, and then he's went straight back out. Uh, he's in preparation for a fight in June. He's in preparation for a guy ranked in the top five of the WBA. He's in preparation for a fight in England. And uh, I think it's a fantastic fight, a fire fight, a fight that can really drive him on to the next stage. We've got a plan now with Matron. And uh, it's very exciting, very exciting. Comes through this, there is big fights on the horizon. Well, we'll leave it there. Obviously, 17 minutes, and I'm sure obviously you're dying either to get something to eat, something to drink, or maybe obviously have a sleep. But, but obviously, I want to thank you once again, obviously, for putting on another great, great night here in Belfast. And obviously, sometimes you never get the praise, they say, obviously, for the cards you do. Mark obviously does great cards here as well, and we're seeing more and more promoters sort of flagging about, which can burden, can, can spread the load about sometimes, you know. But obviously, congratulations on another great card, and fingers crossed we get another one very soon. Well, thank you. I know it's holiday season, Easter, and everyone wants to kind of sit down and eat their Easter eggs, but I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of everyone coming out tonight and, and showing support for the local fighters, so long may continue. Well, do you want to catch up soon? Cheers. Cheers.